Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be featuring the restoration of a Union Machinist chest. Uh, my wife and I were on vacation recently and we were walking around in an antique mall and uh, buried in a dark corner of the mall I saw this box and it was loaded down with all the tooling that you see here and they had a tag on the top of it that said uh, best offer. So I walked up to the front desk and I made a real low ball offer and uh, fortunately they accepted it. Uh, I really didn't need another machinist chest, I already have several of them, but it's kind of hard to turn down these, uh, these wooden ones. And uh, with all the tooling and everything that was inside of this, I uh, felt that I really, uh, basically I stole this box. So this box was made in the late 40s uh, by Union Steel. That company underwent several name changes and uh, Union Steel was the, was the last of the name changes. Uh, at that time, they were actually outsourcing the construction of these boxes to another company called Piliad. So Piliad built this box, sent it to Union, Union applied their hardware and their name on it, and they, and they sold it under the Union name. They also uh, sold these boxes to Sears, and uh, a very similar box to this one was also sold under the Craftsman name and that also was in the late 1940s. Anyways, this particular box has a lot of damage to it. Uh, the top shelf here is sunken down and consequently you can't put the top drawer in because the, uh, the collapsed shelf impedes the movement of the drawer from going in and out. And additionally, the box was uh, in a very humid environment and as you can see here, uh, the back panel has a lot of damage. Uh, this is split and warped very badly. All the veneer is missing here. So um, this box is not going to be able to just be cleaned up and uh, you know put back on the shelf. It's going to need a full restoration because uh, that damage in the back is extensive. So we're probably going to have to at least take the main body of the box apart, uh, repair the damage, and then put it back together. Uh, this box was owned by a gentleman named Ed Johnson. And there's a button in here, and the button is dated 1954. And it appears that Mr. Johnson was a member of Local 1114. Uh, it seems that he was a tool and die maker. And some of the pieces that were in this box were handmade by Mr. Johnson. And he really did a beautiful job when he made them. Uh, he made this C-clamp right here. He made this tap wrench. I mean, it's really gorgeous. He also made this tap wrench. Uh, the drawers were filled with a variety of uh, transfer punch sets. There's a whole boatload of uh, greenfield taps in here. And then uh, additionally there's some uh, T-slot cutters here. And over here you could see that uh, there was also some fixture blocks here. Uh, some 1, 2, 3 blocks, some B blocks here. And these also have the, uh, the clamp with them. And then over here you could see there's a, an assortment of Sterrett and Brown and Sharp. Uh, you got some calipers and dividers and that kind of stuff. Uh, everything in here was uh, made in the USA. It appears that the last time this box was touched was probably the 1950s. Uh, there's also a set over here to rebuild a Jacobs 33 chuck. Uh, these sets are getting uh, kind of difficult to find and uh, it just so happens that I have a Jacobs 33 chuck on my drill press so uh, that worked out really good. And uh, as we move over here you can see that uh, the big drawer on the bottom is uh, busted apart, so uh, we'll have to repair that. And there's even some notes that were in here from, uh, from Mr. Johnson, so uh, we'll see if we can preserve those uh, notes and try to, keep, uh, try to keep some semblance of Mr. Johnson in this box uh, after we clean it up. So uh, the video is going to feature the restoration of the wooden box itself. I'm just kind of showing uh, what came in the box uh, at the beginning of this video, but that's the last you'll see of this stuff. We're just going to focus on restoring this. So anyways, we hope you're going to enjoy following along. Alright, so prior to turning on the camera, I went ahead and snapped a bunch of photos like I always do before any project, just so that once we have this box torn down into a bunch of different pieces, uh, we'll have a better idea how to get it back together again, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start removing all the hardware that can be removed with a screwdriver now and uh, some of the other hardware is held in place with like a split rivet so uh, that's going to be a little bit more labor intensive getting those pieces off so uh, we'll start with the easy ones first and take it from there.
So I'm at the point now where I want to start removing the split rivets. And in order to do that, I have to remove all the felt from this box. Uh, unfortunately, the felt in this box is uh, completely destroyed, so that will all have to be replaced. The easiest way to remove this felt is uh, to use hot water. Uh, the felt is held on with uh, animal hide glue, and that type of glue softens with hot water. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, saturate this felt with some really hot water, let it sit, loosen up, remove the felt, and that'll give us access to the split rivets. As you can see there, as long as you're not afraid to use enough hot water, uh, the felt comes off real easily. Once I get this felt removed, then I'll go ahead and just dry the wood off with a towel. All right, so in order to remove these uh, rivets, uh, there's two sizes. The small ones in the drawer handles, I was able to remove those just using a wedge. I just put a piece of uh, tape down there to protect the wood, and those came out pretty easily because they're fairly thin. These big ones is a little bit different. Um, unless you wanna risk gouging up the wood on the inside, which I wouldn't recommend, the safest way to remove these is just to uh, tap a little uh, starter punch hole there and then just go ahead and drill them out with a drill bit and then once you got your hole drilled just use a pin punch and push the legs through uh, through the other side that way you get them off without doing any damage to the wood uh, they're gonna have to be replaced anyway because once you bend those back and forth a couple times the legs break off anyway so either way they're gonna have to be replaced it's just a matter of removing them in the way that does the least amount of damage Okay, so the next step in the project is to uh, go ahead and finish disassembling this box here. Uh, there's a lot of nails that hold that plywood sub-base uh, to the box itself. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all those nails and uh, soften up that hide glue and finish the disassembly of this box so that we can get this part replaced. Um, that's going to be a little bit tedious taking all those out of there. So. I'll bring you guys back once we have this box completely disassembled. So I got the box taken apart and uh, you can see here it's broken down into all of its components and taking this box apart really took a long time and the reason why it took a long time was because the previous owner had attempted to make a repair to these damaged sections and unfortunately when they attempted to make that repair they didn't try to make the repair with hide glue, which is uh, what was used on here originally. Uh, when you're using that hide glue, it comes apart easily with steam or sometimes just even tapping it, uh, the pieces will separate. But when they made their, uh, their repairs, they used like a carpenter's wood glue and that made it a lot more difficult to get these pieces separated. Additionally, uh, they reinforced this area with a bunch of extra nails. Now, some of these nails were in there from the factory, but about half of those were added by the previous owner just to reinforce these uh, these pieces that were bad. So the next step is gonna be, I need to get a new piece of wood for this. This was the back panel that was missing the veneer, and this is the shelf area. So as you can see, both of those are 
completely trashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find some lumber to get uh, those cut, and then uh, we'll start uh, getting this glued and clamped up and uh, work on getting that box put back together. So that's gonna be the next step. So I went ahead and I cut a couple new panels. Uh, this panel is gonna be for the back and that's going to get a piece of oak veneer over it uh, so it blends in better with the original. This one is for the shelf that was sunken in on the top. And what I decided to do with that one, in order to make it stronger, I, uh, I used a thicker piece of plywood on it. And uh, in doing so, that required that I open up these grooves a little bit here. And it's also going to require that I open up the groove on the uh, front panel. So I've already gone ahead and uh, I've opened up those grooves to accommodate the thicker board, but hopefully uh, that'll prevent that from sagging in the future. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna start gluing up some of these panels that are split. Okay, so I have a little daddo stack set up in the table saw here, and uh, I'm just using the feather board to hold down the wood. So in order to get those thicker pieces of plywood to fit, uh, I need to just take down the edges of them a little bit and uh, so we're gonna use the daddo stack to do that. So this is the first round of gluing and clamping. Uh, there's probably going to be some more repairs that have to be made. Uh, so for these repairs, I went ahead and I used the carpenter's wood glue. And the reason why I used that wood glue instead of the hide uh, glue for these repairs is because these splits that I'm fixing here uh, are areas that are not supposed to come apart. Uh, so that's some of the pieces where the uh, the wood is joined together and uh, that area is not supposed to come apart. So when we reassemble the box uh, with these finger joints and things like that, in those areas we'll use the hide glue. But in the other areas that are never supposed to come apart, uh, like these that I just fixed here, that's just going to be the uh, carpenter's glue. Okay, so I'm making a little bit of uh, homemade wood filler just to fill in a couple areas that uh, have some cracks. So uh, it's real simple, just uh, using some sawdust. I have a piece of white oak here, which is uh, the same material that the box is made out of. 
mix it up with a little bit of glue and uh, use it to fill in the cracks. That way uh, when you stain it, it's gonna stain uh, in a similar color to the uh, rest of the box. Okay, so now I'm in the process of filling in uh, a lot of the nail holes using a stainable wood filler. Uh, I couldn't remove all of the nails from some of these drawers because some of them were uh, beat up so badly that if I removed the nails, <laughs> there would have been nothing left but a bunch of toothpicks. Um, so anyways, I, I pulled out whatever nails I could, and now I'm in the process of uh, filling in those holes with the wood filler. And additionally, this is the top rail uh, that uh, the main latch attaches to. And the bottom of this rail uh, was completely destroyed and chewed up. So what I had to do was I actually had to cut the bottom of that out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue in this strip right here and uh, replace it with that. And then uh, th this is the bottom. So by the time I stain that and everything, you're really not gonna know that it's there. So uh, that's gonna be the next step. One thing is for certain, you could never ever own too many clamps. So these parts right here I had sitting in some purple power just to uh, get them degreased. And then the next step is going to be to start buffing those out. And in this jar it's filled up with evapo rust, And I had the screws, the hinges, and the uh, plungers with the springs. All that stuff sitting in the evapo rust. So uh, the hardware is going to be the next step. Okay, as you can see here, uh, there was a chunk missing out of the front panel of the chest on the top right side. So uh, I went ahead and I cut a piece to glue in there out of a, a scrap piece that was laying around from when we took the box apart. And I glued that in there. Now I'm just uh, filling that in with a little bit of uh, putty. Once we get that sanded down and stained, hopefully uh, it's not going to stick out too badly. So this is the area where I glued this strip on to replace the uh, rotted wood that was on the bottom of this uh, front panel. Um, this piece that I glued on here is just like a piece of pine, so it's a little bit softer than the uh, oak. And I need to reopen up the hole here for the uh, plunger pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it from the bottom going in. The reason why I don't want to drill it from the other directions is because I don't want to have that splintered out. So. Uh, I've already done that side and it came out looking pretty good. So uh, we're going to do the same thing over here. So this chest did come with a key. As a matter of fact, there was two different keys in the uh, box, but this is the key that is meant for that lock. Unfortunately, the, uh, the lock doesn't do anything. When you stick the key in the lock and you turn the tumbler, it's bound up and uh, there's no movement happening in there. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this lock apart and see if we could figure out what the problem is. So after a little bit of uh, trial and error, I determined that the problem with this lock was that the, uh, the key is just worn down and consequently it doesn't lift up a couple of the tumblers. So this lock is a really simple design. Uh, all you have is this little tooth right here. When the key goes in, it flips up these three uh, tumblers right here 
and this tooth moves out of the way and allows that to move back and forth and uh, that opens up the lock so anyways when the key was turning only the one tumbler this one here was lifting up and the other two weren't because the uh, the teeth on the key are just too worn out so uh, in order to circumvent that and still have a functioning lock I just ground off the teeth on the two tumblers that weren't working and uh, so I basically bypassed those two tumblers and the lock still functions just with this one tooth I mean it's not a, a super high security lock or anything but for the purposes of this old uh, machinist chest it'll be just fine so uh, I'll put this back together and I'll show you Okay, so we have everything glued up, and uh, that hide glue is a little bit messy, so uh, make sure you have a couple damp rags around when you uh, clamp up your pieces, because it does run out much more so than like a carpenter's glue. Um, so you can see here we got all the uh, clamps on there, we got them going horizontally, got them going vertically, and we got the uh, corner clamps there, got our squares in there, made sure everything is uh, squared up, so we're just going to go ahead and let this dry. Okay, so I'm having to do uh, some modification on 18 rivets that I removed from the drawer pulls. Uh, the rivet that I removed, the original one, is the one on the far right. And the closest that I was able to find online as a replacement is the one on the far left. But that's a solid rivet. Uh, so I'm putting those in the vise, uh, putting a little slit in there myself, and then just taking them in the drill and filing down the head a little bit until it's exactly the same size as the original. And I have this little gunsmithing anvil here that has a uh, mark by the hole that I need. And that's that. So I just got to make 18 of those. And uh, we should be set on uh, the rivets. So before I get too heavy into the uh, staining and refinishing uh, on this project, I just want to lighten up a couple areas where there's some dark staining. Uh, there's a number of areas on this box where uh, Mr. Johnson had uh, installed some pins and some screws and also there are some areas where uh, just humidity had gotten to this oak. And oak has what's called tannic acid in it and that acid uh, when exposed to certain elements will create these dark black spots like you see here. So uh, the simplest way to remove those is to use uh, oxalic acid and uh, 
the easiest source of oxalic acid that a lot of people already have in their house is uh, barkeeper's friend. So uh, all you do with that is just make mix it up with a little bit of water, make kind of like a paste and brush it on there. And uh, that'll actually act almost like a bleach and uh, it'll lighten up those stains a little bit. It might not come out uh, 100%, but at least it'll make these real bad ones a little bit better. So uh, that's gonna be the next step here. And that's just for cosmetics, just to uh, take those real dark ones out of there. So we got our little uh, paste with the barkeeper's friend uh, brushed all over the surface of the box and the drawer fronts. So I'll let it sit for about uh, 30 minutes or so and then we'll take a damp uh, rag and start cleaning it off. All right, so I got the back panel finished, and I also glued a small strip here to uh, transition from the back panel to the bottom. And I'm just gonna dry fit these little corner braces here, and you can kind of see how it's gonna look. Of course, we don't have any stain on it yet, but you get the idea.
So we got all the pieces stained up and everything came out looking real nice. Um, I'm at the part now where I want to put some clear coat on these pieces. Uh, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want the pieces to be too shiny. Um, for wood, you know, I think it's better to have like an understated elegance type of look. I mean, the box is already beautiful just the way it is. Of course, it has some imperfections in it. And uh, all I want to do is I want to protect it, but I don't want it to be real glossy. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, satin finish white pine polyurethane. And uh, I'll put a couple coats on there. And if that's too glossy, I'll hit it with some 4 out steel wool. So uh, we'll try it out and see how it goes. All right, so we have the uh, two coats of the wipe on poly on there. And after that dried, I took a little bit of four out steel wool and just a little bit of mineral spirits. And I went over the whole surface of that thing and I knocked off any of the shine that was on there. Uh, I don't want that plasticky buildup on there uh, that polyurethane provides, but I do want the protection. So um, I wanted the polyurethane to kind of soak into the pores, uh, provide a little bit of protection like that but I don't want a buildup of uh, shininess on the surface. So I knocked uh, any of that off with a little steel wool and mineral spirits. And now what I'm doing is I'm applying a couple coats of this uh, finishing paste on there. And this is a dark finishing paste. It really has a beautiful luster to it when it dries. So uh, I want this box to have kind of a hand rubbed finish and I don't want it to be too shiny. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll put maybe two coats of this uh, finishing wax on here now. And then after we get the hardware on there and get the felt in the drawers and everything, at the very end, I'll give it one more coat just in case, uh, you know, we create any scratches or anything like that while we're putting the hardware on and putting the felt in. So uh, that's going to be the next step. Okay, so in order to install the uh, split rivets, what I have is uh, underneath that rivet, I have that small uh, gunsmithing anvil and I just put a little piece of tape over it just to help keep it from scuffing up the uh, head of the rivet and I started sp splitting the rivet open using this little wedge and I got the rivet lined up with the pre-existing uh, grooves that are in the wood from the old rivet and then I'll just take a, a pin punch and just tap it down flat and that anvil will provide the resistance that we need to get that in there nice and tight and uh, just go along and put in all those split rivets in the same way. All right, so I'm at the point now where uh, I'm cutting the fabric for the drawers. And in order to do that, I'm using this little uh, rotary cutter. I'm no expert in uh, arts and crafts, but uh, I can cut a good pizza. So um, you just push down on this and uh, cuts the fabric a lot easier than using a pair of scissors or a razor blade. So I just kind of got these weights here, kind of stretched out the fabric a little bit. And uh, I'll be making a cut right here along this ruler. That works like a charm. So now we'll go ahead and we're gonna cut all the drawers and uh, some fabric for the inside of the lid. And then uh, we'll be securing this fabric down with the uh, hide glue.
So what I did here was I made a little jig, just using some paper and some clear tape, and uh, I punched holes in there where the, uh, the holes are for the mirror. So uh, this will serve as a template so that when I go to reinstall the mirror, I can uh, use the existing holes and just put it exactly where it was before. So I just kind of taped it to the edge of the uh, cover here and that'll fold out of the way. I'll put the felt down, then I'll fold that back over and I'll have the uh, holes already lined up just using the template. All right, so now this project is finished and I'm really pleased with the way that it came out. Uh, this is the first time we really tackled a woodworking project on the channel and it was a fun project. Uh, I tried to do my best to keep some semblance of uh, Mr. Johnson in this project and I think we accomplished that. We kept the original character of the box but uh, made the box so that it was functional and uh, I, I reinstalled some of the pieces that Mr. Johnson had in the box uh, as best we could. So uh, hopefully he's pleased with the outcome. Uh, we got the lock working on it again. We fixed the uh, damaged panel in the back. We replaced the shelf so that that's not sunken down and uh, it's a nice usable box. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed following along with this project and we look forward to making the next video. Thank you very much for watching.